Welcome to my weekly video blog for this week. We have entered a period of time where it's uh, very cold. So cold, in fact, that it's snowing and sleeting quite regularly. And I'm told that this is going to happen for uh, maybe two weeks. So, uh, you know, got to have the heater on <laughs> quite a lot of the time. Uh, you know, I've come off my second set of antibiotics now and I'm going back to the doctors on Wednesday. I do feel much better. I don't think that I'm coughing half as much. I'm certainly not uh, making as much noise when I sort of lie down with my chest and stuff, but my voice <clears throat> is coming back, but it's not quite there yet. So we'll see what happens with that. Um, my nan has also had this uh, same problem. Uh, she's just come off her first antibiotics and is not doing so well again, just like I did. So she's going back to the doctors and I expect they'll probably put her on the second antibiotics that I was on. So it looks like we may have swapped places now in terms of getting better again, because of course she was ahead of me in this illness by about three to six days uh, to begin with. If you hear noises in the background, you'll have to excuse me, the heater is on, uh, the quails are still indoors, although they're going to go out shortly, I would think, if the wind holds off as it's been doing, and I do have my washing going as well, so it's all go here at Mark and Field. This week, we are moving on to the first portion of time. A portion is not a season. A portion is a part of a season in which um, a certain amount of turmoil is going on for want of a better word, way of phrasing it. Sometimes that's personal and a crisis of faith. Sometimes it's just uh, family ups and downs. <clears throat> this one is the first questioning. And uh, this was a, a crisis of faith that led me to reject what I had been uh, brought up in, uh, which was Christianity. Now, it's funny because uh, I have actually managed to look in my journal uh, since last week. This is my 1990... I don't want my 1990, I don't want that one. I want this one. I do apologise. <laughs> the best laid plans and all that. This is my 1997 diary there, and I'm looking at September, Thursday, September the 25th. As I said, the trigger for the great questioning uh, was when my grandfather, my maternal grandfather, died on Saturday the 27th. I said to you, I thought the last time I had seen him was the Wednesday, but it was in fact the Thursday. And... I think I will just read this uh, little tiny portion out um, from my journal. Now, uh, you have to remember that I was a lot younger when I wrote this, so the sentence structure, the sort of abrupt nature of it, is not sort of really like how I write now, but back in the day, this was what I was like. <clears throat> so I'll just read this out to you. Uh, just to let you know, I'd done my paper round and I'd gone round to my uh, uh, grandparents' house, and I said, then we next uh, went to see Grandad, who was in the bedroom upstairs. Nan woke him and he said hello uh, to me. Then Nan asked him whether he liked the flowers, and he said yes, but he wasn't fully awake. So Nan asked him whether he wanted to lie down, but he didn't reply. So she told him she was taking down his cup of tea as it had gone cold. And I left. That was the last time I ever saw him. Um, so I was out by a day there, in terms of my memory, but <clears throat> there we are. So the great questioning, I had given up on Christianity following his death, and uh, Christmas came and went, and I had thought uh, that my... See, what happened with the great questioning was not a lot until... Uh, halfway through 1998, the year after. It began in October, the start of October 1997, and it went on until August 1998. My nan bought me a relaxation tape, 
which was based on uh, Psalm 130, I think, um, De Profundis, Out of the Depths. Um, and uh, I had thought that that was bought for me at Christmas of the 1997, but I've actually made a record of all the presents I got uh, from Christmas, and it's not there. So I have to assume that it was actually given to me on my birthday in March 2000, uh, sorry, 1998. Now, unfortunately, that's one of the days that I obviously didn't fill in, so I have no idea. All I know is that by April, I had this relaxation tape, and it was as a sort of meditation tape as well, um, which helped quite a lot. Uh, you know, we'd also, during that, um, during that uh, period, we had started to sort out um, an area of wasteland in our garden. We had a large garden I, I mentioned some time ago, and one of the beds on the side, uh, which stretched quite a long way, um, we had dug up uh, a load of rose bushes. It was one of the sort of last major project, projects that my granddad was involved with um, around at our house before he sort of died. And uh, the land had obviously been taken over again by weeds and thorns and all that sort of stuff. And I uh, turned, I suppose, to the garden for solace, really. That was how I worked out a lot of the my angst over and grief over his death. And I had dug up during the autumn all those horrible nasty thorns. And I prepared the earth and in the spring of 1998, I decided that we were going to, for the first time, I was going to turn it into a vegetable patch. And one of the things that uh, really helped was that my nan was quite enthusiastic in that as well. So, you know, I got seeds for Christmas and my birthday and we planted the seeds and we watched things grow. And of course they, grow, they grew and they bloomed uh, and then they died. But when they died, they turned into little seed pods and the thing that we could do was collect the seeds and grow our own veg from our own seeds the following year. You know, it's not just the story of life, it's also um, an allegory, if you like, of sort of like the resurrection, really. You know, you die and uh, in your death, in these, the, the death of these flowers and these vegetables or whatever, um, lie the seeds for further growth um, and that was sort of the allegory that made me think yes actually you know there could be an afterlife um, just because I, I can't see uh, him and just because I don't feel I still didn't feel like I would ever see him again but um, I sort of saw I suppose the signs in nature in that respect it finally came to me, it finally dawned to me, this allegory, on uh, the 8th of August, 1998. In the morning, uh, my nan came round, it was a Saturday, and my nan came round and we worked in the garden. And she was explaining this to me. She, of course, had um, uh, just sort of been diagnosed with cancer herself, I think, at that point. Uh, she had also sort of suffered the loss of her hus husband the year before. Um, so she was in a similar sort of state of grief, I suppose. And she was able to use that to explain uh, stuff to me that really helped. And as we'll talk next time, um, you know, uh, I decide I'm, I had to make up my mind as to what I actually believed. Once I had done that, I was a Christian in my own right, if that makes sense. So this period, this period of time, uh, was quite a sort of, um, it, was, it was a time of questioning, a time of deciding what we believe in, using things to sort of help us come to terms, I suppose, with grief. Um, and there isn't much more I can say about it, really. I, a lot of it's in my head rather than actually sort of written down in my diary or anything like that. Um, there's much, much more. I did much, much more written uh, stuff 
uh, on the second questioning, which is something we'll get to later. So I suppose that's really about it uh, for <coughs> this, this week. You know, next week I'm going to talk about what's known as the Second Testimony. Uh, and sort of, I'm going to talk about the end of the first questioning and where I went from that point on. Um, so there we are. I'm sorry if I seem a bit out of it, but uh, you know, I'm just beginning to get better from this and <laughs> this uh, chest infection. And yes, I do apologise that this bog is a bit sort of here and there, but this is sort of quite personal stuff and it's also stuff that. I haven't thought about in a long time, stuff that I don't really know how to explain in a way that makes much sense unless you uh, have been through it yourself or sort of understand, uh, you know, having been brought up Christian, having encountered something that shook your faith enough to destroy it and then how you come to terms with that, with grief and eventually arrive back. Uh, at a at a point where you left, but where everything seems different, where you have um, been through a trial and from then on your faith is your own, if that makes sense. Um, I don't know if it does, uh, but you know, hopefully to some people it will make sense. Now we finish with uh, the birthdays for this week. We uh, don't have many birthdays for uh, this week. Uh, but for those who are lucky enough to have their birthday this week, um, many happy returns. Uh, we have the following. Uh, Lil, um, who's a friend from work. Uh, Matt Maynard. Uh, Nico Angles, which I knew in London, gosh, some years ago now. Um, and Dawn Radcliffe. So, happy birthday to all of you. I hope you have a fantastic day when the day arrives and you eat lots of cake. Do not forget the cake.